So electronics are not my background, but I've been having a lot of fun making circuit boards with my CNC machine, so today I want to show you just how I do that. So let's get started. You can make a circuit board using a CNC machine to drill around the traces, a drill bit to drill the holes, an engraver to cut out the board, and then you can solder on components and it should work. Another method is to use a permanent marker to draw the traces, a drill bit to drill the holes, an engraver to cut out the board, and then you can use chemicals to remove the copper, rubbing alcohol to remove the permanent marker. Today I want to go over this method. I designed a special device to help hold the permanent marker, and I'll leave a link to it in the description. The first step would be to 3D print the file, and then use super glue to help glue both sides together. Make sure that both sides fit well and align properly. You can use clamps to help hold it together while it dries. I decided to use these screws to help attach the 3D printed permanent marker holder to the actual CNC machine. Place one of the nuts in the back of the holder and use a screw to tighten and lower the nut into place. You can do this for both sides. So now when you actually tighten the screws, they won't strip through the plastic. I needed a spring, so I decided to take one from the small point pen that was 4mm in diameter. It was just a little too long, so I decided to cut it down. This spring will then go into the smallest of the 3D printed pieces, and then that will go into the bottom of the holder. I tested several permanent markers, but this one seemed to flow out the best and stay on the copper longer. You can place it in the 3D printed holder by pulling back on the spring. With the spring in place, I can keep a consistent pressure of the pen to the board. Without the spring, if the board wasn't 100% level, then I risk the pen being too far away or too close, either drawing the lines too thin or not at all, or the pen being too close and risking breaking the tip. I'd like to say I nailed this design first try, but as always I had to fail. A lot. So here's my CNC machine. I had a previous video on the assembly and how I print using this machine, so I recommend watching that video too. You can now attach the pen by tightening the screws and making sure the holder is firmly in place. The ink will stick better to the copper if we wash it first with soap and water and rubbing alcohol. I then cut some scrap wood to the same dimension to place underneath the copper board so I don't end up drilling into the machine. Make sure that it's firmly tightened down so it doesn't shift while we're drilling. I used Express PCB to actually design the layout of the circuit and export a DXF file. I realized the DXF file stores the shape and position data, so then wrote some software that will read in that information and export the proper file types that I can bring into GCAM. Where in GCAM I can set the machine settings like cut depth and speed and height. And then I take those files and bring them into GBRL control, which actually sends information directly to the CNC machine. I can start with the first layer, which is drawing the traces. When that's finished, it's time to remove the permanent marker and attach a drill bit to actually drill out the holes of the circuit board. And then at last I use an engraving bit that will cut around the perimeter of the circuit board. I can then carefully pop out the board while trying not to smear any of the traces. The two chemicals I use to remove the copper are hydrogen peroxide and hydrochloric acid. These are very strong acids to use proper protection. They will put off a chlorine gas, so even use outside in a well-ventilated area. This will take a few minutes, but you'll start to see the copper fade away. When it's completely gone, it's now time to remove the permanent marker. I found that using regular rubbing alcohol works really well at removing the permanent ink. 
then I use a little bit of sunscreen to remove what's left. And after rinsing this off, the board should now be ready for soldering. And to help me solder, I found this PCB holder on Thingiverse that I was able to 3D print. And it's really helpful that it clamps and holds the board. It has an arm that holds pressure down on the component. And then you can easily rotate this around to solder with both your hands free, which I found very helpful and highly recommend something like this for you. With this project completed, the next thing I'm working on is a 3D printed marker that would insert just like a drill bit. But that'll be for a later video. Thank you so much for watching this, and see you next time. Thank you.